Welcome and good morning. My name is Jody Ozarski. I'm the Vice President at the West Coast Chamber and I'm so happy to have you joining us here today. We're excited to have guest presenter Shannon Burkle, the Chief Client Officer from Axios HR, uh, joining us to lead a presentation on the five ways small businesses can prepare to lead their teams through this post-pandemic world. There's one important thing that I'd like to bring your attention to before we get started. The Chamber's clearly had to completely shift how we deliver our programming over the last nine weeks. Today, I want to thank those sponsors that have stepped up for us in a big way and have allowed us to shift their contributions so that we can provide these types of programs virtually free of charge. Their generosity allows us to focus on helping our members and our community return to being the incredibly vibrant and healthy place that we get to call home. Please take a moment, read through the list of these remarkable partners, and remember to thank them. They've stood with the Chamber and with our community when we've really needed them the most. A couple of housekeeping things before we get started. We've muted all the lines to make sure that everybody can hear as clearly as possible. We'll uh, accept questions throughout the presentation. You can submit those through the chat function at the bottom of your screen. And with that, I'd love to turn it over to Shannon so that we can get started. Welcome to Shannon. Hi, everyone. I uh, hope you're enjoying this sunny day we're having in West Michigan. Um, I'm Shannon Burkle. Uh, I was born and raised in West Michigan. I have been with Axios HR for 20 years now. I work with small to mid-sized businesses all over the state of Michigan, uh, mostly in the West Michigan area, but all over the state. And I live in Spring Lake. So that's a little bit about me. A little bit about Axios HR. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are headquartered in Grand Rapids, but we have different um, offices throughout all of Michigan. We are 100% employee owned, so we are an ESOP. Um, local, personalized service. There's two main core service offerings. One is we help small to mid-sized businesses with employee administration. We focus on your processes, so you can focus on your people. In the areas of HR, payroll, benefits, and compliance. And our other core service offering is our staffing divisions, focusing on the business of people. So recruiting, hiring, onboarding, and retention. And our service delivery is based on a proven process that we hope to create raving fans, clients for life, and we truly are vested in making a difference in West Michigan. So with that, we will just dive right into our topic today. So if we could go to the employee training slide, thank you. So building a resilient team now and as we return to work is absolutely critical. 52% of employees surveyed strongly agree that their employer has communicated a clear plan of action in response to COVID. That's according to Gallup. So 52%. The good news is when they did the survey um, mid-March, it was um, about 15 percentage points lower. But I can't emphasize enough that a clear plan is really what leads teams. So when you think about employee training, we think about things like technical training, cross-training, training our managers, supervisors. What I have to emphasize here is not to cut training and development during times like this and as we return to work, we actually need to enhance these programs. During the 08-09 recession, a lot of training and development programs were cut, which from an expense you know, perspective is com was completely justified. But what happened is we really hurt the growth of our talent in the hard skills area, but as well as the soft skills areas. We took a lot of um, our loyal employees, you know, our executors, our doers, and we promoted them when 
the ramp up started into supervisor roles, manager roles, mid-manager roles, department leads. But unfortunately, we kind of sent them out into those management roles with very little tools in their tool belt. And so I can't emphasize enough that training and development is needed right now more than ever and will continue to be needed more than ever in the months to come. A few things at Axios HR that we have been um, training our staff on over the last couple months and will continue to. Um, one, we had to do some cross-training ourselves. So we had a huge influx of unemployment claims and we needed to cross-train a few additional individuals to be able to help out our unemployment department. Like many of you, we had to train our staff on how to use Zoom and Microsoft Teams. When you think about IT security, as we all went out, or we all kind of worked, started working from home, IT security became even more important. So we sent out to our staff three different videos with quizzes to help them just keep IT security at the forefront of their minds. Client service for many of you is, has been looking different and will continue to look very different. And we need to train our staff how to deliver great client service today. We happen to use at Axios HR the Entrepreneur Operating System, EOS, many of you might as well. And we never missed a beat. We use that tool and we'll continue to use that tool to set goals, hold each other accountable, having our weekly time to connect. It's very important. And finally, we had to do some training for our sales team. They had to figure out how to hold virtual, professional presentations. So I can't emphasize enough that training development is needed more than ever. So as we move on to the second way, workforce management, there's been a lot of conversation about um, potentially that this is a time to top grade our staff, right? So that's definitely something that a lot of companies are talking about. But what I wanna emphasize is that it's so urgent that our leaders help people see how their work connects to the big picture, connects to the mission, the purpose of the organization. So another statistic for you from Gallup, 54% of employees strongly agree that they've been kept informed about what's going on. How could we expect our employees to be connected if they're not well informed? And then in terms of um, workplace management, we also think of things like a planned approach, assessing your talent. I would urge you to just have a clear plan, take full control of your workforce management, and maybe do the exercise of reviewing your accountability chart or a traditional org chart. Discuss your workforce plan with all the leaders in your organization and be aligned and be very clear about the talent that you need to return to work and to continue to grow. Next, a few comments on talent attraction, and I always think of talent attraction and retention. Um, in terms of retention, ask your employees for feedback. We do a quarterly pulse survey at Axios HR and we ask two questions. Would you refer a friend to work at Axios HR? And would you refer a friend to um, our services? It's just really important that we're listening to our employees and that we're taking their feedback and putting some of that into action. The other thing that I've had a lot of conversations with clients about is perks. So I'll just kind of run through a few of them that have been hot topics. Um, one is future having a hybrid um, opportunity to work both from home and you know on site at the office. So that's a perk that a lot of businesses are talking about. Second is wellness benefit plans. Um, EAP, so employee assistant programs have been something that a lot of employees have um, benefited from, especially during those these times and when we'll continue to. 
A more obvious perk people have been talking about is telemedicine. Um, and one that maybe you haven't heard of is caregiver support programs. So an ancillary benefit that provides caregivers a whole support website, support program, resources, and so forth. My favorite topic these days is compliance management. So when, I, when anyone asks me about compliance, basically the first thing I think of is document, document, document. Um, write it down. Um, we're all aware that we need to have a preparedness and response plan and have a written plan. I mean, there's different um, exposure risk categories, right? Uh, low risk to very high risk. A low risk business's you know, response plan might be shorter and not as detailed as a business that's in a higher risk category, but please make sure you have a plan. Please make sure you write it down. Document every conversation you're having with your employees. Document your cleaning schedule when you get back to work. Um, you know, I just can't emphasize enough that it's one thing to do something, but you really have to have it documented and written down. Health screening, daily health screening is another um, topic that we've been talking a lot with our clients. Obviously, it's required right now for manufacturing and construction, um, but we're kind of saying it's a best practice for all industries. At AxUSHR, we absolutely will be doing and have been doing daily health screening. And in terms of compliance, I think we'll see a lot of new information come out in the next week or two, and I'm sure we'll learn a lot from our friends in Region 6 and Region 8 as you know they open more and more businesses. And finally, the last way is employee administrative processes. So I've been talking to a lot of employers in the area that have some lessons learned um, during the time of COVID. So if you think about your employee administration processes, many of them realized during this time that they weren't really that efficient. Some of them realized that there's only one person in their whole organization that knows how to do employee administration. There was no backup. A lot of businesses realized that it was all done with paper instead of electronic, which brought some challenges, right, as we're all working from home. And some employees had feedback for their employers around that their experience just wasn't that great, that they weren't getting their questions answered in a timely, timely manner. So what do we do with these lessons learned? I would suggest that you just take a minute and really think about your employee administration processes. Are they cost effective? Are they compliant? Do they really, are the processes developed to really think about the employee and put the employee first? You know, are they developed in such a way that the employees have a really positive experience? And finally, are they stable and sustainable solutions? So I will leave you with this before we open it up for some questions. A clear plan leads teams. Don't cut your training and development. Enhance, use this time to enhance your training and development. Connect with your employees and keep them well informed. Survey your employees. Ask them for their opinion. Ask them how they're feeling. And then in terms of compliance, document, document, document. And finally, just make sure that you have stable and sustainable employee administration processes. So at this point, um, I'd love to open it up for some questions. Thanks for that. We've got a ton of questions coming in kind of across the board. So we'll see if we can't um, kind of ask questions from all the different categories. So if we go back to the beginning, and you were talking about team health, um, the questions that we received is that it's really difficult to um, gauge team health when everybody is working remotely. How are you structuring those team meetings to make sure that you're developing a healthy culture? 
Yeah, um, I would, my first suggestion is just to make sure during the meeting that you carve out enough time just to have connection, general conversation with your staff. Um, you know, a lot of us are going from Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting. Um, and just say, hey, for the first five minutes before we kick off this meeting, how's everyone doing? And, you know, just take that time to connect. Um, one fun thing that we did at Axios HR is our marketing team coordinated um, a Zoom trivia um, game. And that was a really fun way to connect, too. But just take that time. Don't just go Zoom meeting to Zoom meeting. Um, connect with your employees. That's great advice. It seems like morale kind of um, ebbs and flows these mm -hmm. days. And so are there other ways that you've heard that teams are doing some great things to, um, to levelize that, uh, that team morale? Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I think about my team. I mean, we do just really simple things. We're texting each other funny pictures of our kids, um, you know, just being there for each other, calling each other a lot more just to check in. And, you know, if you do have a coworker that's in need, something like EAP services or to talk to someone else um, is a great suggestion too. But um, it's just the little things, in my opinion, that add up and show that someone cares. That leads um, well to another question that came in. You mentioned the caregiver support um, option. Can you talk a little bit more about that? That's a concept that I think a lot of people aren't familiar with. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it is an ancillary benefit that a company can offer. And um, in the simplest case, if you just think about a set of siblings or a family that has to take care of uh, maybe an older parent, a parent that, um, you know, unfortunately is at the end of life or just needs a lot of care, right? And so this is one, it's a set of resources. So all kinds of resources, um, maybe to help with living arrangements, um, medical resources, uh, support for the family, but it also is a communication tool. So there's a web-based portion to this program and you and those that are caring for this person can log in, share photos, you can have schedules, pay bills. And so if you have maybe family all over the United States, this is a way, a program that can bring them all together and be on the same page they're taking care of a loved one it, 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 it's a great benefit and you can turn it on and off you know when you need it you can take it off the shelf and use it but if you don't need it um, you know it can just sit there as a benefit for when you need it yeah it sounds like a great benefit it is it truly is some, some additional caregiving that's happening these days is we have parents at home navigating school for their young children while they're still trying to work how do you recommend teams navigate that situation? Yeah, I mean, it, it has been tough, right? So to all you parents out there, I'm, I'm giving total empathy. Um, good job, right? You're a teacher, you're a parent, you know, you're working. Um, but you just, you just have to, I guess, bring the human into it. Um, I know we all have businesses to run. I know we all have a lot of work to get done. But at the end of the day, we are just people trying to figure it out. And so, I mean, my best advice is just to approach it with empathy and understand. I mean, I've been on so many Zooms, I'm sure you have too, where there's a dog barking in the background and a kid that needs their lunch. Um, but just approach it with empathy and understand that we all need just support during this time. But it, it's definitely a balance. And I know so many people have you know, been challenged with um, working from home. Right. And now we're starting to make that transition to um, moving back towards uh, working in the office. We've heard a lot of talk about A teams and B teams and having shifts of people. Do you have recommendations on what that looks like as we start to bring our teams back to the office? Yeah, absolutely. So at Axios, we're looking at teams too. So I'm team B. Um, and the best thing I can say is just to communicate. I mean, there, you, you can't over-communicate. Um, send out that schedule multiple times. Talk about that schedule multiple times. Um, we even published a cleaning schedule. So share that multiple times with the staff. Um, and then, you know, just 
try to think everything through. I mean, we put up some sneeze guards. We made sure we had all our PPE, um, everything that we needed to clean. Uh, we took chairs out of conference rooms, right, so that you could, you know, help people think, okay, we can only have two or three people in this room because we have to social distance. But um, communicate, communicate, communicate. And there's no such thing as over communicating with something like returning to work and schedules and cleaning schedules and, um, you know, the office environment or the manufacturing environment or whatever. Yeah, uh, that leads well into another question about a preparedness plan. Um, there's talk about requiring um, having a, a preparedness plan in place. So a couple of questions have come in along that line. Do we, A, really need to have one? And B, if so, is there templates out there that we can find that would um, be easy for us to use that we know then would, would make us compliant? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, you know, it can be a little daunting if you're a small business because I've definitely read some people, some companies prepared plans that are, you know, 50 pages long and it can seem kind of daunting at first. But, you know, if you're a low risk business, a small employer, um, really all you have to do is put together a few pages of some best practices, some things that your organization is going to be mindful of and outline your return to work plan. And yeah, yes, you do need one. And there are tons of templates out there. We have a template. I know the um, Small Business Association has a template. And I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, chambers probably have templates. So, um, you know, and once you get a template, and if it's for a low-risk business, all you have to do is kind of fill in, you know, your company name and make a few edits. And, you know, then you have your plan. And make sure you do share that plan with all the employees, too, and probably share it more than once, right? Talk about it more than once. Part of that plan, will that include or should it include kind of a cleaning schedule? Um, I'll use cleaning as a broad term. <laughs> and if so, what should that look like? Yeah, I mean, a best practice is, yes, to have it include a cleaning schedule. Because it's not just about cleaning at the end of a day, right? You could easily outsource that and have every night or you know, every afternoon a business come in and clean. But you're supposed to be cleaning frequently throughout the day, right? Um, so one, yeah, have a schedule. And then outline instructions. So our cleaning instructions say what you should use, where those cleaning supplies are located in the building, and then some tips. So... If you're cleaning, let's say, the kitchen, wipe the fridge handles, wipe off the mic, the buttons on the microwave, wipe all the drawer handles. And so um, just kind of go through each room, or, you know, or each floor of your office building and just kind of think, okay, what are the things throughout the day that people are going to touch that I need to clean a few times? Great advice. Um, that may help with employees that may be hesitant to come back because they feel unsafe. Um, what about those employees that um, are hesitating to come back because they may be making more on unemployment right now than it, when they return to work? How do you navigate that as an employer? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, it, it, it is tough, right? I mean, a lot of people needed help, and I'm glad that people got help. Um, but you know, there is work available and that person just has to make that decision. But if you can make it safe, if you can have a good plan, if you can communicate and make sure all those employees are well informed, then they're gonna feel a lot more comfortable coming back, a lot more comfortable. So um, we've, there's been a lot of discussion about mask wearing and you, <laughs> information on both sides, whether you should or you should not. So uh, what about the requirements for masks in the workplace? Can you um, require your employees to wear masks? And um, what happens if they refuse? Yeah, so at this point, um, we're still waiting on some guidance, right, for office buildings and, and so forth. But, you know, the best practice is just to wear masks to help each other and feel, and feel comfortable and make sure you're providing those to the employees. Um, you know, when someone refuses, that's just going to have to be a case-by-case -case conversation. But, 
you know, this is new territory, and I do expect that we'll get more and more guidance on, you know, things like mask wearing in an office environment. Gotcha. Um, another question around um, some of the health screenings that need to happen. There's concerns about requirements for organizations that um, have never been held accountable to HIPAA in the past. How do they know what the requirements are for tracking that information and for the privacy that's involved? Yeah, and it, are you referring to just the daily health screening, so the questions and the temperature check? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so at this point, they're not requiring that those records are kept. Um, so really, it's just something where it happens in a moment in time. You're asking these questions, you know, taking a temp, and that it does not have to be recorded. Now, if you are um, in Kent County and you've chosen to use their app, they're recording it, but you don't have the employee's name or any of the information related to who they are um, when that's being stored and used in Kent County. Um, the other thing I would say is a best practice is just have one person. So manufacturing, right, is required right now to do daily health screening. Well, at first, everyone was scrambling, right? So Monday, you had supervisors and all these different people doing health screening. And what I have learned is the best practice is to have one point of contact or even outsource it to somebody else and then have them just go, okay, all the screening, you know, was done for the day and just report that to one point of contact so you do limit that information sharing. Okay. Uh, this brings up another question. Um, it seems like the rules change constantly and it's hard to keep up with what the requirements are today and tomorrow and the next day. Where are the best reliable sources for that information? People want to do the right things. It's just hard to know what the right thing is today. Yeah, no, I have complete empathy. I can absolutely understand. As an HR company, I mean, we every time something comes out, we're scrambling too, right, to understand it so that we can help all the employers in this area. But, um, you know, you can go to any a law firm and you can sign up to get their um, – their blasts and their their daily update, and that seems to be a really reliable source. You don't have to be a client of that law firm, um, but you can go and access that. And then uh, the Small Business Association of Michigan, I have found to be a really reliable source, and I have just am following them on social media and signed up to get their daily blasts. And they hold a daily webinar um, with you know the latest regulations. So those are two. Two resources that um, you could turn to, and as well as us. So, great. And I'll throw in there the chamber. Go ahead. Chamber. Yeah. <laughs> Hit our toolkit on our website at westcoastchamber.org. There's a lot of great information. We try to, to keep that as up to date um, as possible. Um, another question came in. Um, you talked about having kind of backups and making sure that if you've got one person doing um, everything, you've got a, a risk point there. But for these small organizations, how do they have a backup when they might be um, in a really small office environment? Do you have some best practices to recommend? Yeah, absolutely. So I do understand that. You can't have, if you're a small office, you can't have two people fully trained on all employee administration. My suggestion would be to partner with a third party. So, you know, if you, if you only have one person in your whole building that knows how to do payroll or one person in the whole building that can answer a benefit question, you know, you're at risk. So partner with a third party is the best way. And it's not a, it's not a costly thing. It's actually a much more, much more cost effective way to do it. Um, but absolutely, yeah, if you're a small business, that would be the recommended backup. Perfect. Well, Shannon, as our time here comes to an end, um, what's the top takeaway that you would leave with these small businesses as they go to navigate uh, this situation? Yeah, I would say two things. Um, communicate and connect and keep your employees well informed. Um, and then two, in terms of compliance, I guess I would just say, you know, don't let it, don't try not to let it stress you out. Do your best and just document everything you're doing because everything you do do 
is a positive and is helping and just document that. That's a great encouraging uh, way to end this conversation. Mm -hmm. Shannon, thank you uh, for coming and giving us some insights into ways that we can uh, navigate this situation on a daily basis. Uh, we'll make a recording of this presentation available on our website and we'll um, also be sending a survey. We love to get your feedback, not only on um, what you enjoyed about this presentation, but other ideas for um, presentations that we can do in the future that would be particularly helpful to you. There are additional resources on our website um, in the toolkit at westcoastchamber.org. And I'd encourage you also to consider joining us tomorrow at 1 p.m. We're having a webinar, a healthcare and business update on getting back to work safely and operating safely. So with that, I will say thanks for joining us and make it a remarkable day.